the day i was born being a male it has been a privilege right like mm-hmm. all of us there are five hetero dudes talking about privilege that's like a joke in in our university if we were not male we would have been uh, forced to eat half half eggs right uh, <laughs> <laughs> is this not a myth like is it not a myth no <laughs> no the of course it is not you, a myth and i know it sounds funny but it's actually it like literally women are getting half the nutrition there's differences there's biological differences for example they yeah. have periods that we don't How much of being a heterosexual male is a privilege? Have you like thought about that? Of course, that? it has been a privilege. Like... The day I was born, being a male, it has been a privilege, right? Like right. all of us. Yeah. I I guess that there there were many things that I I couldn't have done in our society if I was not me. Like uh, to start with, uh, I might have. not uh, like ended up spending uh, night outs during my school time so doing group studies during my school time if i was a female right then uh, then uh, in in our university if we were not male we would have been uh, forced to eat half half eggs right Uh, <laughs> is this not a myth? Like, is it not a myth? No, is no. The, the, of course, it is not you, a myth. Ma- Mala, you need to so. you need to elaborate on this uh, half egg thing because most of the people don't actually know about oh, this story. So, <laughs> so uh, in in our cottage, uh, there there was a saying that if the soft step, they were soft half eggs, half of an egg. So uh, this is not a myth. Of course, there, there must have been some incident where. they pair of half a egg so if i was a, if i was not a male i would have pushed that trauma then uh, trauma <laughs> of having half egg of, of course you, you <laughs> are having poverty. food and you are having half egg <laughs> that's true so Now, food and nutrition is one of the basic ways to govern population right and once you make a difference mm-hmm. between that a man can have a full egg and i know it sounds funny but it's actually it like literally women are getting half the nutrition than than their male counterparts yeah. i'm sorry bala please continue yeah. then yeah. uh they, they had this strict 10 pm at night to get into their hostels which we didn't to our campus was a closed campus sort of a closed campus right yeah. so uh, yeah. what 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 was the point in uh, locking them inside uh, like cattle uh, at 10 pm So, uh, it it didn't make any sense human uh, then then uh, then the similar thing it happened in uh, central uni central college also back in spa uh, they had this uh, time limit when they used to be locked up uh, but yeah there were there were liberties like it, it was much more flexible than uh, our batch undergrad batch so uh, then after that of course uh, one of the prominent things is uh, you were not bugged like there, there are fe- several of my female uh, friends who are bugged to get married uh, like when they are 25 26 so yeah. all, all these are privileges right the- even they have their inner privileges that they are being bugged in 25 26 and rajasthan has legalized child so that's yeah, like that, so that is some, even there's something. difference privilege there like there's a sub category of board allow korto or thakto college e korte yeah so <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, yeah. actually yesterday uh, yesterday i had talked with uh, one of my friends student who was literally being uh, forced to get married to being from uh, like all this uh, privileged background like english medium uh, had finances uh, uh, studied architecture and everything but she was being forced to get married just because she has turned 25 you have something to say about it no i think i think that uh, forcing young women to get married is very more common than we realize as men we mm-hmm. never really probably realize that in indian society and doesn't matter whether it's a rural area in haryana for example or a highly posh bengali family in central calcutta it doesn't really patriarchy operates throughout the city center to the rural hinterlands so 
in that sense, I think many women are either forced or uh, they are they are discouraged actively uh, to pursue career or pursue higher education uh, within the framework of patriarchy to kind of uh, you know become the reproducer. Uh, basically, the marriage is for the next gen, like for her to bring up the next kid, right? And that operates. I mean, yes, even people with education going to college uh, are also facing that. A lot of women. I I. I personally know multiple women who have faced uh, that across India, including Calcutta. It's not like, I mean, there is, yeah. uh, we have this kind of a notion that for 34 years we had the Communist Party, that's why we kind <laughs> of dealt with these issues. Yeah. We didn't. The Most of the leaders of the Communist Party were upper caste people. Of course, mm -hmm. probably yeah. Communist Party was very active in a lot of, this, lot of issues of discrimination in a sense that is ideologically perhaps agreeable but regardless of that 34 years of cpm party in west bengal cannot solve thousands of years of brahminical patriarchy that's far more powerful exactly. than institutions exactly. and, and, and the fact and that the fact that those marriage as an institution is the hindu marriage as an institution in, in the india is it's like huge it's very powerful like you know a few days ago we saw this Netflix show called uh, I don't know what was arranged marriage matchmaking or, like or something like matchmaking, matchmaking Indian matchmaking yeah, Indian matchmaking kind of Indian matchmaking so so revealing of these yeah. deeply entrenched structures uh, not only within India across the diasporic networks in United States Canada rich people extremely wealthy people it's not like they have to worry about food or rent or like uh, need a husband to take care of them whatever they're still within that paradigm that a woman after a certain age like like there is an age limit for a woman to get married and that then you kind of keep reproducing that 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 idea that you know what that you know what that comes from just you know what I, I want to just uh, contradict in point like what practical patriarchy patriarchy it exists in india so right, it right, is yes, not only yes. one one religion it is across mm -hmm. And uh, apart from that, uh, you have money, you don't have money, it doesn't matter. Like, it, it is all the same everywhere. Look, it's, it's, no, it's no, the I, same I everywhere. Say, and I don't say it is, it is, the, it is Brahminical patriarchy in order to... Uh, the, I, I don't use the word Brahminical in a sense that it's, it's about one religion or the other. Yes, patriarchy operates in other religions and other social settings as well. The, the the idea of Brahminical patriarchy is that the patriarchy is very caste based as well, and it is it is not the it's there is a difference between Hinduism and Brahminism. The Brahminism's idea is that that basic idea that caste Hindus are superior than other Hindus, so it's discriminatory within one religion as well, right? Yeah, uh, not but all Hindus. When we are talking the idea, so. Uh, I mean, that's the idea. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying that's the way it is structured. Um, and yeah. th that was a social... Yeah, sorry, I, I'm, I'm going on a tangent. No, no. <laughs> no, no it's a, yeah, it's like... <laughs> the, the thing is, like, as for the banner is saying, the, and I want to like, slightly bring it to back to that, is that, that um, like... I forgot. I forgot. I forgot what I was trying to say. I think I... I think when I, we I are think, talking just, about... Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry, right? to saw it. Yeah, I, 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 saying, I just remember. No. I just remembered one uh, very funny scene from one of our movies, famous movies, Three Idiots. If you remember, the moment uh, the kid was born, and uh, the, everyone saw the little raisin in between the legs of the baby, they were, oh, this guy is going to be the engineer or doctor or whatever. So that, that is the privilege of the privilege of being a heterosexual male, right? That is hmm. even portrayed across our. Uh, that is that. If you talk about movies, then Bollywood is full of shit. I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is. Oh, my there is objective. Objective. Can't take Bollywood as an example. Actually, yeah. I mean, when we are talking about patriarchy, it, it, I, for my opinion, I think it's it exists everywhere. So um, yeah. you know, I okay. actually want to appreciate Dean Land and Devjit your channel actually to bringing this point of words and talking about this topic because unless we acknowledge these things 
and talk to the common people i mean same minded people like us might be uh, you know uh, so many people are watching this and they are understanding why it is important to acknowledge these sort of things there was time when all of us we were not aware of these things and we actually didn't knew what what privileges what patriarchy is and yeah. after you know learning these things and observing these things in the society we started to you know uh, uh, you know to acknowledge these things and we, we sort of started to uh, notice these things like uh, now when i you know uh, my boss is a female she is a female and uh, when i when i am in uh, corporation I, um, uh, my office i i have never seen more than two women joining a uh, you know stakeholder meeting uh, for so uh, for people who don't know about me i work as an urban planner in mumbai and most of my work is uh, you know uh, is associated with uh, in you know consulting with uh, the stakeholders of our project so that we you know before implementing anything we uh, usually go to the people and talk with them so uh, it actually it's very strange uh, and it it I, i have never when i now when i think about it uh, i have never seen more than two or three uh, female candidates uh, in any group when we go to you know a stakeholder consultation meeting or something like that so uh, these are the small things which you initially you maybe you i i was also one of them that i didn't realize these things but now when you know when we are talking about this stuff actually i come to know and uh, think about these things so it's you know it's uh, it's it's a really uh, uh, important thing to to discuss these things with with people uh may also uh, may, maybe within your family so when we are talking about patriarchy yeah. every indian family has this system that you to ghar ka beta you study more and if you have a sister they'll they'll usually push her to you know maybe to do a normal graduation course and then get married this is very common thing we cannot deny that so uh, it's really uh, i mean uh, disheartening at the same time uh, as as a male or maybe sort of privileged person we should you know uh, talk with our parents first and we yeah. should let them know that this is not a you know you know you should acknowledge her capability or you know sort of you know uh, uh, encourage both of them may, despite of their gender to do well in their life so uh, in my opinion if we want to you know target these issues we need to start from our families which is very important mm-hmm. I I I like to talk about my experience and probably go to Neema after that because I think he is he is not going to understand this. I I um about being a heterosexual male my I I've never like because I've grown up and almost my sister my mother and like most women and even my cousins a lot of women so I I didn't realize this a lot but I am definitely not an alpha male for people who know me <laughs> I am I'm not a good high kilo ka hat but I I'm nowhere near that. So I don't know maybe that was one of the reasons why I became why I became slightly more observant towards this. but then i saw i think i pretty couldn't sum it up better than dave chapel who i recently saw like give this speech it was that how he how did he realize the fact that he had a male privilege not just heterosexual male privilege as a male privilege itself was that once when he was a young comic someone gave him uh, 25000 dollars in a bag and he and he like took that bag and he was very scared because like nobody knew that 25000 dollars in the bag but he knew and he was very scared to be robbed and he went at 12 in the night he went through a new york subway and it's like very it's, it's a dangerous <laughs> slightly slightly sorry vibrant <laughs> for a uh, new york subway at 12 in the night so and he realized the fact that man i'm scared because all of these men i have something that all of these men want and probably that's what something having a pussy <laughs> and that's what that's how that's his words not mine but like but like the fact that you realize this that i was going in an auto and suddenly there's you, you go in an auto in kolkata like there's just probably one woman in your auto most of the times and this i this one of my seniors and colleague in an office he came and he said that it was so weird there was like four four women in the auto and i was sitting in the middle and said like think about how women feel in the kolkata autos and also like there are there are men there are men who know who, who tries to all these do like stupid i don't know stuff so it's very 
like when you realize all this i think bala was talking about like why were they locked up for no reason it was a closed campus anyway so like it's it's very tough to acknowledge it because i think dishan mentioned the point as well that when privileged people don't want to acknowledge it because they feel that their privilege will be taken away or they whether they feel that they will they are they, are, they don't have anything they haven't put in any effort so it's kind of it's kind of easy for us but it's kind of important for us to acknowledge it and try to start with our families that that okay this is these are the, these are the things that are wrong in the society doesn't mean that we follow this even if scriptures might have said this because they are thousands year old scriptures they don't they, they don't really matter now you know you know what's on this yeah but in my opinion that uh, uh, this uh, in india basically in india i would say that this patriarchal society uh, is predominant on the one of the major reason is that people try to push uh, the male child on all those stuff that they are but basically if some uh, la- uh, lady pilot like fly one uh, the fighter plane then everybody appreciates her oh she is the first lady to do that oh she is the first woman to do that she is the first like uh, we are all human beings and as a human beings we should not uh, Uh, divide the society as male and female but we should treat everybody equally like we should not appreciation appreciating women to do a such and such job like the uh, uh, ceo of pepsico so so we appreciate her because she is a ceo of pepsico being a lady she is the ceo of pepsico one of the biggest uh, fmcg farms of uh, usa like we should not appreciate uh, suddenly out of a sudden in linkedin these days i see a, a lot of uh, a lot of posts like that that She is the first lady to do this, to that. Like she is not a lady; she is a human being, uh, and she is educated enough. So why to like uh, all the time point out that she is a lady, and that's why we are appreciating her. She was she uh, she was not a lady; we would have not appreciated. So uh, these things is also something I feel that should go uh, from the society. Like being a lady, you get a appreciation. Like. everybody same like we, we should treat everybody like same but in our society it is yeah. not like that like uh, yesterday only i was talking i was in the construction field back in india and over here in us i am doing masters so i was talking to a lady uh, yesterday so she is uh, like working 60 hours in the construction project and she is doing her ma- masters parallelly in the in our university as well as she uh, she has two kids of her own but she never uh, like she, while speaking she never told us uh, in a way that she is doing great or she is having so much struggle or she is a lady being a lady she is working 60 hours rather i uh, went on and appreciated her for being doing so hard work and she is telling that as long as you are enjoying work i never feel that uh, i work 60 hours a week i do masters as well i have two kids i never feel like that You, uh, I appreciate that uh, you are appreciating me, but uh, it's not like that over here, anyway. And her research topic is uh, the contribution of w- women in uh, construction industry, anyway. So I told back in India, in construction industry, there is no space for women. Yeah, people work in L and T companies like that, but they are doing office job. But in the field job, there is no women in construction industry. and the people will not uh, obey also like the people if somebody is a project manager and she is a lady and she went to the site and uh, like uh, dealer like uh, de- delegates the work to the supervisors of the foreman they will not listen to her also but over here she told that no it is not like that and she is not acknowledging that she is a woman she is uh, she, uh, over here in usa what i realize that they uh, don't segregate like they don't differentiate men and women the other way like everybody is doing every work back in india this cultural uh, people uh, people talk about it all the time yeah being a lady she is doing all this yeah being a lady she is doing all this no, that, they, they should not speak like this this way of speaking and way of like uh, like looking into the society must change like we are all same from the childhood it must be raised like that we we all must be raised like that that we are all same like there should not be any distinction yeah but i i get that but like maybe for an equitable growth you need to address that they have had a lot of they, they probably don't have a lot of privileges and probably at least i i understand what you're saying that we don't we should we shouldn't acknowledge at the end but, yeah. but rather oh, yeah. address the challenges that they faced and try we to we should 
inject try to bring uh, equitable growth so they don't have to face these we should inject this idea of uh, like uh, equity between uh, in the society male and female from the uh, childhood itself in the school itself like or oh, uh, the society should be structured like that that they don't treat men and women the other way like uh, she is hmm. a woman she is a man like all all the same the society must be structured like that from the very uh, start so that we don't need to appreciate them after uh, they achieve something great yeah I mean, like, there's differences. There's biological differences. For example, they yeah. have periods that we don't. But we yeah, have to address that. We have to incorporate that into our growth. That okay, fine. This is the privilege. Correct. This is this person's privilege. So, whether she is disabled, whether he is disabled, whether she is that, whether he is that, whatever. Or, or like, there's genders and all of the questions. I'm not aware to speak of. I'm speaking of in binary terms, probably. Like all I the time. Try to, I'm trying to be inclusive. Probably like you get all, that. Like all the time, the the, the women have to. Like uh, give up to their dreams. If you uh, don't work and your uh, wife goes to work, and if you see that thing, then the society will also point out finger to you, and they will not appreciate the women. So uh, this kind of things must go uh, like uh, eradicated from the society. Right? I think the only way we can eradicate is probably to break up the family structure because I think a lot of uh, all these burdens on women. guys like they can only bear children and that's how mere vanch ko aage le jana hai but science can do that now right science can probably do that in a test tube thing and probably will we will do that in the next few years or so even if they have not but 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 i i i will defer here i'll just intervene here the west they try to do that the social structure that you're speaking about right so but that doesn't work in, in, in like in the long term right now they are uh, in, initially they had smaller lots for single family like the two or three people probably live And right now, in the some of the rural areas, they are going to multi-family housing, moving back to their uh, parents' house. They, there has to be some middle ground. Wise, uh, both are radical. Uh, what we practice in Asia, it is also radical, and what they practice here, it is also very rad- radical. I would love to go back to the question. Original question was about the advantages of heterosexual male or oh, being an heterosexual okay. male. And then no no both of them are related. Then we arrive. Oh okay okay. Okay. So so I think first we need to problematize the idea of heterosexuality and family structures are very related in a sense that it's only a, a family as a household that reproduces the population or the labor or the work that is required it happens in most cases through a heteronormative idea of family. right so being the, we discussed what are the advantages of being a male what are the advantages of being a man but we never discussed the advantages of being heterosexual uh, we we kind of skipped over that part and probably that is because we come from a society where talking about sexuality is still it's not a taboo anymore we do talk about sexuality and sex but when we are in a public podcast let's talk about our sexuality yeah. is not like we are the most comfortable oh yeah you know what my sex yeah. life is awesome or like a barren desert whatever so the point is that what about heterosexuality in itself is advantageous and that applies to male and female both right so we we may never know i mean considering that all of us are hetero we may never know what the society would be like if we were not hetero right uh the, the amount of shaming and amount of like op- like an oppression that happens on people who are non hetero i don't assume to know what their experiences are is immense and we don't even like we are not even in a position to even discuss it right mm. but what is important is that you understand that there is heterosexuality which is perfectly okay to have and then there's the other word that i would like to use is heteronormativity the idea that heterosexuality is the only right thing to do and all other forms of sexuality is wrong not allowed in the religious mm. doctrines not allowed in the state laws for a long period of time like we very recently yeah. had uh, a change in the legal system that that was very recent and that was due to years of struggle and activism and lgbtqia movement and all of that even in the united states and in india as well and other parts of the world but that's very recent right so the heteronormative family structure 
being the idea of a household, a father, mother, and the child or child or children, is if you fundamentally problematize that, then what you have at the end is uh, if you do not have an alternate model of society, right? That is that can be sustained for the larger population. So this is an intellectual and practical challenge as well. How would you convince an entire population? that this idea of the father, mother, and children, this idea of the heteronormative family can be problematized, right? Now, I think what we, what I personally believe in is that we bring in or empower the politics of choice. That's what probably partially liberal identity politics is about and partially it's there is a lot of criticism of identity politics one of them being pointed out by Nirmal is that why celebrate a person because of their gender right mm -hmm. but the idea of choice is that you may be heterosexual but you should not be heteronormative which means that you can have a hetero partner but if someone else does not conform to that idea you should be equally respectful to that person you can be a male but if someone is not a male, you have no right to look up, look down upon that person in the first place. You are no one to evaluate whether that non-male person is good, better, or inferior than you. Because it's not on your framework. Right? Yes. Now, yes. the point is, to exercise the politics of choice, the conundrum is, to exercise the politics of choice, we are back at the differences between identities rather than the sameness of identities. Yes, at a, at a level we are all humans, but our exercise of choices then again like are, are kind of tied back to our identities. That I choose to be hetero or I am hetero, my choice of partner is a female versus someone who is non-hetero, their choice of partner might be different than my configuration. So we cannot equalize everyone. Yes, everyone is a human being. But the point is that in order to identify the choice, identity becomes the only the dominant mode of exercising that choice. In other words, your choice becomes your identity. Yes. So it, it, am I making sense here? Like I'm just give me a response. Yes. Like no, no, no. Yeah, so meeting when meeting your sense. choice becomes your identity, then you are back at the same game. You you are considering equality as a as a as a aspiration that everyone should be treated equally. But for everyone to be treated equally, everyone is to be allowed equal affordances of their individual choices, which might be different for each individual, right? Yeah. And to have that, then identity needs to be different. The the difference between identity exists. To have the equality in the end, because it's like the same game of saying like, okay, uh, if we, uh, <laughs> I don't know who, who that is, but thank you so much. But uh, so the point is that uh, there was this, you know, this uh, very important meme in, I, I saw it a few days back in Facebook, I think all of us have seen it, that there is a, there is a monkey, there is an elephant and there is a fish. And uh, the examination yeah. quality, like equity, the, yeah. right? So everyone uh, is expected to climb the tree. Yeah. The monkey wins. Monkey gets the first prize. The elephant can climb the tree. A fish can get out of the water. So we are the resultant is that the monkey is the best thing and the fish is like the right. But hmm. in order to have equality in that scenario, the elephant might be asked to you know, push some heavy object, the monkey might, monkey might be tasked to climb up a tree and the fish might be tasked to swim in the water. So their differences needs to be recognized, whether we celebrate them is not the point. Their differences needs to be recognized to have equality as the aspirational uh, future, right? Uh, which is why I think like, Yes, it doesn't make any sense to uh, appreciate someone because that person is a male, or that person has a penis, or that person has a vagina. It doesn't make a difference. Should not make a difference. Yes, I agree. But then, how do we understand equality unless we understand that the difference that exists within the society? Yeah. 
for these yeah. for these uh, different modes of identities, right? So that's like a catch twenty two situation. I don't I don't have the answer as I would have like probably. Been. This is how you do equality. I don't know. Fit it fit it, fit it into data so science. No, 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 no. I'm just saying that it is at once uh, problematic to identify people with respect to who they are in terms of their race and gender. At the same time, it is very important to identify people because their differences are the make are the modes through which equality might be might be the possibility of equality might be generated. That's that's where I wanted to kind of uh, like kind of explain very uh, briefly the the actual problem mm -hmm. of having a governance system where everyone is treated equal. It's not that easy, and like. Vishan suggested, like from his experience, that women are not being able to participate, or are they not participating? Which one is it? Right? You never know. You can never know because you are not a woman. You may never know what it is like to be a woman because you are not a woman in the first place. Right? So, are they being categorically marginalized from being a part of a discussion where they should be participating, or are they just disinterested to participate because this is a male-dominated society? I think it's a Which one is it? Very most, for, in most cases. Yeah. In most cases. In most no, cases. My, my, my yeah. point was that uh, in a society where people are distinguished more of male and female, there this uh, privilege lies with the male and the society is much more patriarch. But in a society like in the West, what I noticed in my opinion, they don't distinguish uh, like male and female that much and so they, here this thing does, doesn't uh, like uh, this uh, privilege thing does yeah, uh, doesn't. like that is probably probably because uh, feminist politics has a stronger presence in the united states than in the and indian subcontinent although there are great feminists in india as well so the idea of women rights equal wages for women idea of gender equality idea of idea of having a gender friendly space I think in the formalized society of the United States, those are more powerful because of the politics that happened in the last hundred years. So yes, I do see your point, but we have to understand that society is this way. It doesn't mean that the United States was always this way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. And yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm saying that uh, there, there needs to be a comparison between which society is more gender equal, because we know we have the answers to that. Uh, which society has more female empowerment at this point? point but I'm pretty sure unless, it's, it will probably be not United States with the recent Texas law but then yeah but, then but at the same time when you see leadership positions for example United States never had a female president right India had a female prime minister India had a female president so look at that really look at look at Facebook and look at how how people speak about her <laughs> even North Korea, Korea has, is going to have a female uh, supreme right that would, be very interesting. that would be very interesting. That would be very interesting. What I'm trying to say is that is that it's it's difficult to compare uh, United States with India because of the varied histories of these two continents. There are yeah. some similarities, of course. Well, the existing and social social, good, but hmm. the existing social roles uh, that there's yeah. there's in India and in the United States is different. Like they don't grow up in a society where like there are there's like separate schools called co-ed schools right now at least for, for the past 30 years probably right yeah, at least, I, I probably it was back school, then yeah. the yeah, so the, the, the term doesn't exist because schools are generally okay go ahead like, cool. and then like here they're probably talking about yeah it's like everybody should study you know school, you're a kid you, you go to school you're three yeah, that's the that's know, the criteria DJ, not just because you're a female yeah, or i don't you know, know DJ, yeah you know dj what is more important here is that your take, I, in my observation, people, people's approach towards gender equality or, or issues of gender in particular and issues of race in particular vary vastly across the aisle. If you are in the conservative side, what, no matter what your politics is, so I see that there is this whole debate around abortion rights in, in the United States now. In some states, it's perfectly legal to have an abortion. In some states, it's illegal to have an abortion. And now there is a federal effort to make like abortion legalized or or it's pro-choice versus pro-life. 
Now, the point is, as males, we are part of the discourse as listeners. My take is that we should not exactly. speak on the matter in the first place. <laughs> right? Exactly. But then, the problem with that is that it is a gendered issue. And the problems of the, of the genders which are othered, like, for example, race. Let's consider race, all right? So, I am a certain race which is not the dominant race in the United States. My problems or my experience as a person of color, it doesn't make sense to me personally that if the discourse only involves person of persons of color, the discourse mm -hmm. must involve white people and black people and other people as well but it must involve the majority it must involve the powerful uh, because if there is no involvement of the one who is more empowered then we are just basically talking amongst ourselves but the problem yeah. starts with just the union. <laughs> more, yeah so it is it is extremely difficult for yeah. in, uh, it is extremely important and difficult at the same time to communicate with the minority right so how do we do that when we are we are empowered is it by like you know not talking about privilege in the first place because we certainly have a lot of them or do we engage in the conversation but then we are kind of occupying the space by ourselves as well like oh there are five hetero dudes talking about privilege that's like a joke right and and we need to reconcile. We need to. I don't know that. This idea. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just making that. As no, a, yeah, as I, a, I understood that. Intentionally provocative yeah. statement. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's where I think a lot of my questions lie. A lot of my, you know, things that that are pretty deep and problematic. Okay. That. I, I don't I think we have we have, we have, we have like talked about right? I think I think it's been one hour one hour <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's still five people watching thank you thank you everyone who, who are watching this we didn't expect <laughs> but anyway thank you for the comments I think we have not been able to go through all the comments but any uh, so I hopefully I, I think uh, uh, hopefully these five people also talk to more five more people about these issues and five more and uh, five uh, more and within six. So, of the Trying to create, the uh, yeah, a big chain of this. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, do, do do share this uh, if you if you want to show this to anyone. What we have talked about, if it, if it was valuable to you. Uh, otherwise, do follow the links are in the description. Do go to our channel, like, share, and subscribe. If you like, and obviously comment and tell us what you feel like. If we had been wrong in certain places, do point out point us out. We would like to. This is just a discussion, so just like feel free to say whatever whatever you feel like. Uh, we'll be back with probably. Uh, I don't know. I don't know which topic. You guys have to decide. But but we'll be back with another episode doing this. Uh, keep watching. Take care.